got 29 seniors that have their final regular season home game that have been through a lot. I mean, th through a, a pandemic, some of them took a turn back. They're playing their final game. They have a chance to have a couple of 10 win seasons. What can you say about that group of 29 players? Yeah, you know, Jesse, I I'll tell you what's really, really neat about these seniors. Um, and, and it's not an automatic. They still have a good ways to go. Each one of them is on path to earn a degree from the Air Force Academy. And, and, and that is always the priority, um, which you know, that's, that's, there's a good bit that has to be completed or checked off for that to be the case. Um, academically, you got to take care of business um, through a very, very demanding curriculum, uh, conduct, the maturity that you have to have, um, and that you exhibit, and that's your behavior, and that's who you are as a human being. Uh, certainly the military requirements, the standards that have to be met, and, and still, though, to find a way to balance, to be a, a significant contributor to our football team. And you're a significant contributor to our football team, regardless of how many snaps you play in a game. And for us, everyone practices hard. Everyone, the expectation is you're going to lift hard. But just in terms of your energy and your attitude and everything that you're all about, you're going to be a contagious person in a really positive way. And uh, these guys have done every bit of that and beyond. Today, your offensive line was recognized as a semifinalist for the Joe Moore Award. Um, a lot of pride that the program takes in, in something like that? Um, you know, I, I, yes, it is. Now, uh, you know, we've done it in a way that I think's unusual or at least uncommon. I'll say that. You know, often uh, you do it with maybe five guys or six guys that have taken almost. 98 percent of your your major snaps you know whether that's in a close game or in the first three quarters of uh, a good number of your games or this year that has not been the case and um, uh, I, I think it's more of a it's especially a cohesive effort uh, led by uh, you know I think Hawks played really really well this year you know at right guard I think he's been the one that's played the most snaps for us this season too uh, and then a number of those other guys at different times being able to be out there and so uh and then incredible job by the offensive line coach Steve Lobotsky too your, uh, your thoughts on how Ian Castanway played he goes in there and was one-on-one -on -one with some of the best receivers in the country going back and looking at how well did he play what an initiation huh I mean to really play uh you know and I thought you know I thought what he did was um I thought especially the first two and a half quarters played exceptionally well. I think now he realizes the conditioning that's involved in playing a game. Um, so I think that experience will certainly help him going forward. You know, he's been a good player on special teams, though, too. So it's not necessarily a surprise in terms of some of the football instincts that he does have. And I think the other part of it you see that he has shown is he, he, he's capable of being a really solid open field tackler, too. What is UNLV doing differently or better now in protecting the quarterback? Through like the first eight games, they gave up a lot of sacks, 30-plus. They've only given up three in the last three games. Yeah, you, Jesse, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, they have played really, really good football here over the last month. You know, you look at the number of close games that they've had really in the last, you know, six weeks or so. You look at uh, the Utah State game, the games that they won. Uh, I mean, last week it's 21-20 late against San Diego State, and uh, – they um, they have tremendous players. You know, you look at a back that rushed for over 1,200 yards the last full season of football in 2019, has a really, really good chance where he gets over 1,200 again this year. Um, they have two quarterbacks that can absolutely play. You know, one of them was one of the most highly recruited quarterbacks in all, you know, in the whole country. And uh, he comes in last week and goes, I don't have the exact, like 18 for 23 for 320 or something like that. And then uh, an exceptional talent with the freshman quarterback, too, with, with good players up front. And then defensively, um, four has been really, really dynamic. With the twitch off the edge, um, has played well. And, and the interior guys, especially the nose guard, uh, strong bodies. And, and you see it across their entire team. So, Coach, the biggest difference from them the last month is their ability to run the football. Is that why they've been in games? Or, um, I, I think it's all of it. You know, they're they're playing darn good football, 
and um, the play they got at quarterback last week, Jesse alluded to it a little bit earlier, how well they're running it, but also how well they're protecting, and because of it, how well they're able to get the ball down the field offensively too. You'll have somewhat of an indication of how the division will play out, maybe even before you guys kick it off. Is that a distraction to you, or is that something you'll keep an eye on, or you just focus on UNLV? I, I think that's a person's choice. Is you, Yeah, is that or is it not? And uh, I, I will say this. I think it, the respect that we have for our players, the duty is to give them the best chance to play as well as they possibly can. And um, – and, and truly, Friday night, that's the only thing that, that's going to mean the most to you. You know, did you play hard and did you play well, especially against a really talented team? And it's the only place our focus should be. And uh, there may be outside forces that come at you with different items, and that's okay. Just know what we need to do. Uh, when the team is 2-9, and nine, but like you said, a handful of those losses coming by less than a score. I mean, what does that say about the team and from what you've seen from them? Why did that happen? Yeah, just immense capability. And, um, you know, I think also you look defensively. They've played it. They played really, really well defensively here over the last month and a half, too. And um, Trey Bug, one of the seniors that we're going to talk to today, just, you know, obviously he's contributed for the last several years, uh, not last year. But, you know, what has he meant to this program? Yeah, you know, Trey is um, – he has maturity beyond his years, uh, does a great job of being able to reach teammates. Um, just one of those guys that's, that's level-headed, great competitor, remarkable young man. And, um, you know, you think there are six guys that are going out there on Saturday or on Friday that are on track to graduate in, in three weeks. You know, and that'd be Trey, that'd be Jordan, that'd be Lakota Wills. Lakota won't be out there. We'll introduce him. Um, uh, would be James Jones, would be Colby Barker, and then uh, who else? Uh, Demonte Meeks and uh, uh, Jordan Jackson. So those guys, you know that, and really that that is the goal of our program. You know, you graduate, you earn a degree from the Air Force Academy. Say the chips fall where they may. Kind of piggybacking off of Rob's comments, and you guys are playing for a Mountain West championship berth. Uh, Friday, where would you put that game in terms of big home games for Air Force in recent memory? That's not what we're, we're thinking, and we shouldn't be thinking. Please take that respectfully. I mean, just um, we we got we got such a difficult and really quite a task in front of us on Friday. I mean, this this will be a yeah. This, we, I mean, you look at how many games we've been in that have gone right down to the really the last couple of minutes and. All indications are this will be a very well. Could be another game like that. DeAndre Hughes with his incredible performance last weekend. Do you see that and go, you know, 220 yards, two touchdowns? Do you try and utilize a guy more based on a big performance the week before, or is it just the game plan for the following week? Um, I, I think, you know, you hear me say it. I mean, each game's a little different, each circumstance. Um, Certainly a situation uh, in the way you game plan, maybe certain matchups. I just don't know if I can just make a generalization and say absolutely yes. You talked about the offensive line, the rotation you've had to use there and how it was uncommon. You really have that up and down the roster. I mean, you mentioned the cornerback. And, you know, is there a little extra sense of accomplishment or pride in being in this position given the fact that the team has undergone so much change? Yeah, it's – um I mean, we have gone through more different lineup changes than than what you desire. Yet at the same time, um, I th I think we've embraced opportunity. You know, I think the players have. I think our coaches realize that um, if we got to think a little more outside the box or dig a little deeper, you know, in some of the things that we do, we've absolutely had to do that. And one of the the newer guys, Bo Richter, was that a was DeMonte injured, or is this just a product of somebody, you know, earning an opportunity? He, he, you know, look at some of the work that he's done on special teams. He has, you know, kickoff, um, especially kickoff. I mean, just moves well, good-sized guy that, that's still learning some of the intricacies, to put it mildly, when it comes to college football.
And when you look at UNLV's program, obviously they've got some new facilities. They're playing in a very nice stadium now. Is this one of these programs that, you know, you can kind of see them on the verge? Do you think they could be a, a regular contender? Absolutely. You know, for the reasons you just mentioned, um, they're in an area that's growing rapidly. Um, they have a home venue that might be the best there is in all of college football in a lot of ways. Uh, the investment that they've made in their football operations building, um, most certainly. Is that it? Again, I, I apologize for making you wait. You got something uh, at stake this weekend, right, with the Mountain Division? And how do you keep your focus and not let that be the distraction? You know, our mentality all year has just been play the next game. So just focus on going 1-0 and and beating UNLV, who's a very talented team. They have really good athletes all over the field. So definitely trying to go out there and just play to the best of our ability and win this weekend. A little easier said than done, though, right, to not think about it, right? Oh, Maybe for 100%. 100%. You know, um, we got a lot of young players on the team, so they some sometimes people can get wrapped up in what bowl game we're going to or all the X, Y, or Z that needs to happen in order for us to be able to go to a championship. Uh, but we also have a lot of senior leaders on the team that know that if you get caught up in those type of things, you could you could easily just lose the next one that's in front of you. So just keeping everyone's focus on that. And there's a lot of drive uh, with everybody, just this being senior night and everything. Uh, a lot of drive to let all of us, all the seniors, leave with a win. So are you one of those guys that says something to the younger guys, like let's focus on UNLV, not worrying about possibly playing next Saturday? Yes, sir. Along with uh, Jordan Jackson, Demonte Meeks, you know, we're all – we're all just trying to keep everybody focused on winning, and that's what we that's what we've been trying to do all season, especially with Coach Calhoun. He he made an emphasis item uh, this week about the last two times we've played them at home, we've been down by four scores at halftime. So definitely, that's a that's a heck of a statistic. So that's something that's been in our head, and we want to come out and and change that. This is a better team than their record would indicate, correct? Oh, 100 percent. They play they play a lot of good teams, really close. And you can see why. I mean, they fly around on defense. Their offense is – they run a lot of NFL-style routes. And their running back is Rushford. He's a leading rusher in the conference. So they have they have the pieces. It's just – they've lost a couple close battles. Coach was saying you're going to graduate here in a couple of weeks. I am, yes, sir, December 16th. Have you thought about it all, how tough and what an accomplishment that is? Because it's not easy here to graduate. Then you add the football aspect to it as well. Yeah, right now I'm kind of just – my head's still down, you know, just whenever you're in football season, you kind of – you just don't have time to think about all all that you have accomplished. I'm sure I'm sure once we get through this break and I turn in all my final projects, because I don't have any finals, so as soon as I turn in my last final project, I'm, I'm done and I'll have earned all my credits as a Air Force Academy cadet. And saying it out loud, it definitely, definitely sounds a little crazy because whenever you're a freshman, you can't really see that far. But now that I'm almost here, it's definitely a cool thing to experience. Thank you, thank you. You played the last regular season game here at Falcon Stadium. Do you have a favorite memory from a game here or just a time here at Falcon Stadium? There's a lot of cool ones. Honestly, I'd probably say my favorite ones are in uh, the spring ball, the spring scrimmages, where we're not really full of fans, not everybody's there, but just everybody on the team's going out there and we're getting after it. And going into the locker room, just hanging out with your friends, and yeah. The, being in the locker room with all my guys are probably my, my favorite memories. And um, when Rob asked you one of those questions, you brought up Jordan, you brought up DeMonte. I mean, how much do those guys mean to you that are also graduating uh, in December? You know, they're both uh, 21ers with me. So, I mean, some of my best friends in the world. And the fact that I'm, even though we did decide to take a turn back, we still get to graduate with each other. It's it's really cool. I'm really I'm really proud of them for what they've done because they, they added a year ahead of me because they went to the prep school. So, them just being here for five and a half years is it's commendable for sure. And like you said, it's kind of hard to look back over the last few years right now to see what you've accomplished. But if you could give a piece of advice to the younger guys on this team, what would you tell them? It's hard. There's a lot of things I could say to the younger guys on the team. But um, if I were to say one thing, it would probably be enjoy the little moments, you know, because those, those are the ones that you remember the most. And, of course, everyone remembers the wins. Everyone remembers how you felt at the end. But the thing I'm most fond of is the bonds and friendships I've been able to make. So just enjoy the little things with your teammates. And then just overall a favorite memory from the football program over the last five years. I 
That's hard. There's there's a, there's a lot of cool things that we've that we've done together. I'll I'll say the Cheese Bowl, being able to spend a week um, in the hotel with with all with all my friends was was really cool. It was really fun. I mean, I'm not gonna. I mean, that was cool, but that was just a play, you know. Yeah, that's that's actually my favorite picture of Air Force football is Jordan Jackson pouring a whole box of cheeses down his face. That's my favorite Air Force football picture. Now, I apologize. I came in a minute late. Uh, I'm not sure if you've been asked about kind of the, the games all happening at the same time here on Friday. Uh, will you be looking up at the scoreboard to see, like, where Utah State is, where Boise State is? No, sir. Doesn't bother you no. at all. No. How do you take that approach? Because you can, you can do all the analysts. You can say, oh, if this happens, this happens, then, then we're in. But – if we lose, none of that matters. So focused on focused on winning, winning this game, and that's that's all that's on our mind right now. Now, do you take a, like a, is it any different playing as a senior in your final maybe home game? Is the message any different to the younger guys or the guys you play with? You know, just uh, a lot of the messages have changed from the coaches more so than the players. The players were kind of still in the thick of it, and we know that um, this is another game, and we're trying to prepare that way. The coach had been talking about how they want to send the seniors out with a win. And me being a senior, of course, I'd love to go out with a win at Falcon Stadium. And, yeah, it's just pretty much just trying to keep our head down and stay focused on the, what's in front of us rather than what can be, happen beyond this game. Do you take any pride in, in what could be your last game as a senior in Falcon Stadium that you guys could be playing for a chance for a Mountain West championship and, you know, you're, you eclipsed possibly 10 wins uh, again this year? You know that's a that's a really big accomplishment to be able to even say that we're in the conversation. It's it's an honor. Um, it's it's really cool to be because that's that's everyone's goal in this conference at the end of the year is to try to get to that game. And the fact that we're one of the the three teams on our side that's still in the conversation is it definitely means a lot to us. I'll ask the the harder question, but so there was three flags on Friday night, wasn't it? Have you ever experienced a night like that in your life, or did? So I have never been called for a pass interference before this past game. And, you know, I got getting three of them. It definitely hurt. Definitely hurt the pride more so than anything else because we still won. So I'm able to learn from it in more of a positive way than in a negative way. Um, you know, the refs saw what they saw. They made the call. And it's one of those things where as a DB, it's a short memory. So you just got to keep going on the next play regardless of what happens. On the fourth down in particular in the mm -hmm. fourth quarter, you know, was there a moment where you thought, you know, yes, we just won the game, you know, before you saw the flag and realized they were going to continue? I thought I'd make a good play. That ball was really high in the air. So I thought I got there right at the right time. Uh, looking back on film, I probably got there a little early. And I understand why they made the call. Um, but yeah, I just I just stood up after the first one. I kind of stood up looking to see if there was one, and then I saw it, and I was just, we got to keep playing football. What do you learn from that? You know, if you had never had one of those before, and then to have a night like that, what does that do as a player to educate you and to spring you forward? Uh, it just it helps to know that every ref calls different plays, uh, different calls differently. So, uh, I could definitely do some things better in that situation, like not even make it close. Just if I would have played my technique a little bit better, or trust what I saw a little faster, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have even been a question. So just some self-reflecting and just getting back to the fundamentals. I know it's week 13, and uh, sometimes you just get so caught up in the game, you can kind of forget what you rely on. So just getting back into that and going to be solid this week. And a major theme of this season has been, you know, next man up. So many positions have seen turnover. You've been able to stay healthy, and all throughout your career you've been healthy as far as I know. Is there something to be said for keeping yourself going every week? and uh, Or is it just a lot of luck? No, a lot of the uh, testament goes to Coach Getty and our strength staff, you know. So after every practice, if you played in um, – after the game, if you played a snap, if you were on the field at all, you have regen, required regen. And then after every practice, you can work with soft tissue, ice tub, pool, do whatever you want, but you got to check in. So you have to get that done. And – I owe, I owe a lot of that to them. And another thing is just the maturity aspect of, of once you've played in so many games and you realize how your body feels after every single game, you realize that it might be it might be good for me to stretch and get loose on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so that on a Saturday I'm feeling I'm feeling my best. So how much dedicated time would you say in a week are you putting in on the side to do those sorts of things? So I come in early to practice, so about 40 minutes uh, before we start meetings. Um, about 35 to 40 minutes after 
we're done with after we're done on the field. And then when I'm in my room, they gave us, uh, after the Army game, they gave us, like, a mini thur- uh, Thuragun. So, like, the thing that just, like, vibrates. Yeah, we, we got one of those. So I use that every night, and I actually bought a yoga mat recently. So I've been doing, I've been doing some of the stretches on there. And I understand you're not preoccupied with the, the way things need to go in the conference, but did you at least educate yourself on, okay, this is what the situation is? Like, is there danger in that? Oh, no, I, I definitely educated myself. You know, watching, you know, we're still, we're still football players. We want to go. So uh, watching the Wyoming game, uh, we were, they were flashing on the screen saying, like, what would need to happen for each team to win. And then the Mountain West posted the, the thing on uh, Instagram and Twitter saying that what would need to happen for us to go to the championship. So we all know what has to happen, but part of what has to happen is us winning. So that's what we're focused on the most because that's all we, all we can control. And then back to the senior stuff, what, what job did you get? You found out earlier, though. Right? I found out back in January, I believe. So I got Space Force Acquisitions. So will you, do you know yet, will you start that immediately or will you have a little time to kind of weigh the options and see what's going on before, before the draft? So I did send up my package and that is being um, going, it's going through the gauntlet right now. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Um, just, and it's tough in this kind of situation because when you graduate on time, you kind of know if you're going before you graduate. So it's easier for everybody on the timeline basis. But for uh, me, JJ, and James Jones, we're kind of just playing it by ear, trying to, trying our hardest just to keep our heads down and focus on the things that we can't control, like finishing our classes strong and uh, finishing out this season. But as of right now, our graduation date is December 16th. So we would get a 60 days afterwards uh, if we do commission. And we'd be able to use that for how we, however we see fit. And then uh, Coach mentioned Lakota is going to be recognized too. Is he still with you guys? Do you still see him? And what? Because we haven't obviously had a chance to talk with him. Like, what is his state of mind? You know, going through the same side of pro- sort of process as you guys and not being able to finish it. You know, I don't want to speak for Lakota because he he definitely has his own opinions on a lot of things. I know he's very excited to graduate. I do know that. Talk to him every day. Uh, I know he's very excited to graduate. So, so did you hear? You guys ready? Are you aware of this Joe Moore Award? That you guys are semifinalists for? Uh, yes, sir. I just found out a little bit, a little bit ago. Now, is it cool, you know, to be part of a, a collective award like that? I mean, it's always good to, you know, get accomplishments for what you think, like how good you think you're doing. Uh, obviously, I'd like to win, but my main priority is just winning the games. And then uh, with senior day coming up, now you were, you did not take a turn back, right? No, sir. So you're graduating in May. Yes, sir. Like, Everybody we've talked to seems really happy with their decision regarding the turn back. Like, how do you view, you know, deciding to come through last season and, and all of that? Uh, I mean, in the end, I one of my main things was I wanted to play football and I wanted to graduate from here. So I think my decision, I got to do both. Clearly, or obviously, I didn't get to play as much football as I wanted because last year I was behind a really good old line, didn't get to play too much, which – I was still happy with because, I mean, they were great guys, really good players, got to learn behind them a lot. So I think I learned a lot from them last year, which helped me a lot this season, I believe. So I'm still happy with my decision. And then, I mean, I'm just glad we're having a good season. So it always makes your senior year a lot better when you're doing good. Is it going to be a different senior day just because it's the melding of two classes and it's, you know, people who had to make a decision, you know, through this and then also to have a good a good year and, you know, I have a great year in 2019 also. Like, is there a lot that goes into the emotion of this? Uh, I would definitely say say so, yes. Uh, I mean, the guys who took turn back and are uh, like J.J. in that class, uh, I mean, we kind of bonded together as a team this year, so it still kind of feels like they're still like our brothers are, like they're still kind of in the same class with us. Like, so there's no really like distinction between us, I, I think. So the emotions are still going to be pretty high. But uh, a lot of my guys, I've been going to school with them for five years. Some of my guys that went to the prep school and did turn back. So it's going to be tough seeing them and seeing them next year playing while I'm somewhere off doing my job. What, what job did you get? Uh, I got space operations. And where were you? do you know where you'll be stationed yet? Uh, so we do not know where we're going to be stationed yet, but we're going to be, I know where I'm going to be tr- doing my training, which will be in California. Have you done anything specific for that yet, or is it just kind of you'll you'll go train for that specific job once you're out of here? Uh, as of right now, I'm just uh, trying to graduate with my major, and then uh, I'll do the training once I get there, yes, sir. 
And then um, what kind of excitement is there to go into the regular season finale with a ton to play for still? I mean, morale is definitely high. We all, we uh, we came into the season. Obviously, you want to win all our championships. We have the CIC, which we fell a little short, but now we still have a shot at the conference, and we still have a shot at uh, obviously a bowl game. So, I mean, morale is definitely high. Really hoping for you know things to fall through or fall into place, and we get a shot at it. And then. Uh, the rushing title is kind of a stake, too, in this game. You know, as an offensive lineman, you have a huge hand in that. The two top rushers are going against each other on the same field. Do you, are you aware of that? Are you aware of where Brad Roberts could finish all time, you know, for, for Air Force? Uh, so, I I mean, I've heard little, you know, murmurs throughout the, the locker room. I heard he could do something pretty special, which, I mean, I could definitely see Brad's a pretty special player. I mean, I hope he gets it. But, again, our goal is just we got to win the game, give us a shot at winning conference. Okay. And Trey said, you guys have done a pretty good job of not being too caught up in what would need to happen and all that. Like, are you aware of the path to, to advance? Uh, yes, sir. So I know either thing has to happen. But, again, I mean, our main goal is just winning this game because if we don't win this game, we don't really have a shot anyways. So we're just trying to do what we can. I'm curious, Hawk, what you're most looking forward to on Friday. Obviously, a lot on the line. Uh, I mean, Friday's going to be a pretty special day. My last regular season, along with a lot of the other seniors, last regular season game. I'm just excited to go out there, get one last shot with the boys, and try and bring home a dub. Is there any particular moments, like running out of the tunnel? Or no? It doesn't have to be. Uh, for me, it's going to be, I mean, my favorite moments after, after a win, we go sing the song and then go back to the locker room and just celebrating with all my all my teammates, that'll be the, the most special for me. Good. Trey said that he's not going to be looking up at the scoreboard with these three games, which mean a lot with how this could all shake out. Curious your thoughts on that? Uh, during the game, I'm just locked into what I, what I have to do to do my best to help the team. So I agree with Trey. I won't really – I probably won't even know what's going on outside of our game. So, so Air Force uh, – Led the nation, leads the nation rushing for nine straight weeks. That beats the 2010 record of eight straight weeks. So considering you know the O-line new this year, all the injuries you've had to deal with, what does that say about the guys that just come in and, and replace each week? Uh, I mean, it just shows kind of like the grit and the you know ability we have together and the trust we have in each other. doesn't really matter who we put out on the field. Uh, is We all trust in each other. We all, you know, we bonded together this season. We know we're going to get it done. So that's all that really matters. So, I mean, obviously you're focused just on you and LV, but how much fun is it to have something like this at stake on Friday? I mean, it always means a little bit more. You know, we gives you a little bit, a little bit of a chip on your shoulder. You know, to something extra to fight for, putting a little, putting maybe putting a little extra weight on the bar in the weight room or something. But I mean, it definitely adds a little bit of intensity to this week of training, getting ready for UNLV. What do you see from UNLV defensively? Uh, they got, I mean, they have great players, uh, some of the best people we've seen this year by far. Uh, and I think it just, it's just going to come down to whether we can do what we do, and that's around the rock. So, How'd you get the name Hawk? Uh, I don't really have a story. It's just my dad got to name me. My mom didn't have a name, and so she just asked my dad, and he just went with Hawk. Thought it was cool, I guess. It is pretty cool. Did you like it as a kid growing up, or? Uh, I always enjoyed it. So they they gave me my middle name, which is Alexander, kind of as like a backup. So if I didn't like Hawk, I could go by Alex. But I always just loved the name, so I went with it.